Welcome back to Scorecast NX. It's it is Tim. A, it is. And Jacko. Is this a playground session or a QA? Both. Yes. It's always playground. Um, right, should we get into it? Well, yeah, I think. Do you want, is there any reflections that we need to have on recent times? We've been a while since we've formed. The last QA that went out, you, I listened back to it. And you sound a rough as guts. Yes, it was that one where it Ill. snowed, you were proper sick. Yeah. And you're like, fever. You in bed. Two, I went after that, that was a Thursday. Friday, I was then actually off work. Yes. In bed, two coats on. <laughs> Joey special, two coats, and shivering under the duvet. Mm. And then would wake up hot. Yeah, I didn't, my voice wasn't great. Yeah. Um, but since then, we've we've had some amazing guests gift us with their knowledge and presence woo! on the playground yeah. sessions. As we record this live now, some of those aren't yet yeah. out, but when this goes out, they will be out. If that makes sense, um, there is some knowledge to be what, had. Yes, why the excitement? Yeah. Um, right, but today we are talking about muscle ups and helping you solve your muscle up problems. So there's quite a few things going on in the muscle up. We get a lot of questions about them. Yeah, sit tight because <laughs> yeah, turn your ears back. <laughs> this could go on. I've got a coffee. We're going to try and keep this to the 20 minute mark. <laughs> but but um, so, no um, a, so the first sort of specific question coming in from Candice, who's actually Candice. Hello, Candice, if you're watching, um, has been to one of our workshops in London. It was great to see her. Um, her progression just during the workshop as well as like going on from there. Um, Start with any compliments? Did she kick us off with it in the way that was, we've become accustomed? Um, Not really no. by the looks of it. No, she didn't. You've Which, done well, Candice. To get, yeah, to because get she came to the workshop, that obviously yes, was a compliment in itself. Maybe that somehow worked into the algorithm. <laughs> Which is meant it's ended up in, in the, uh, it's been chewed yeah. out by I can, our... I'll put it. Um, yeah. Hi Tim, I think you're amazing and the best coach I've ever seen and I love everything you do. And I also watched the Instagram video about muscle ups. Um, and I'll slightly paraphrase that her um, problem that she's realized is that her shoulder posture is compromising her um, pull up position and the pull up being that sort of first phase of the muscle, whether it's on the ring yes. or the bar, it's the first phase, we've got to do that pull first. Um, and um, how can she work on improving that, um, or can she, it was, it was more actually, it was a redefining impossible question mm. I would say, she was asking, is it possible to get those pull up mechanics back yes. if she's had poor posture for such a long period of time, she's talking about sitting at a desk, um, which is, you know, a lot of that sort of stuff for all of us do, mm. um, not all of us, but most of us do. Um, so, can she get some help with the start of her muscle up being phase one, the pull up, um, and how can we go about improving that posture? Or even, it'd be a good one, because if other people might be going, now listening and going, oh, have, well, I don't know, is my shoulder, how can someone identify is shoulder posture an issue for them? Yep. And then what, what can we do about it and how that affects the pull? I think that's a great question. I've just laid that on you there, haven't I? Shall I? Yeah, go for it. I'm just going to drink um, coffee. Yeah, sit back and enjoy this. <laughs> I'm going to make some money. Some note. <laughs> um, Candice, you can take heart and some comfort that you are probably within 95% um, pit situation with the same with the rest of the population. I didn't phrase that very well. You are probably in the same situation as 95% of the population. Having worked as a strength and conditioning coach for 10 years, there are very few people that I see that don't have some form of shoulder dysfunction, shoulder postural problems. Dysfunction is a hard word. Yeah. But from, from me, when we look at um, movement quality, it might be that there's some issues going on and we might look at, call that a movement compensation, movement dysfunction, but essentially posture is what it often comes down to. Everyone's different though as well, right? Like structurally, like in yeah. terms of our skeleton, like not everyone has to look the yes. actual same in terms of what's perfect posture yeah. for that person. We like to take an anatomy textbook and we look at, we <laughs> see symmetrical bone structure. Yeah. And the reality is if you peel back the skin of 10 different people, they would, the scap would be slightly different shapes, yeah. the size of the, the fossa and on the scapula where the, um, the humeral head sits, that would be slightly different, bone lengths are different. So yeah, everyone's got some individual variations in what they're just built like. And everyone's beautiful on the inside, that's what I like to say. I've, I've got this thing actually, beautiful on the inside, but I'm fairly squeamish on, um, you know, there's like um, surgical programs oh, where someone's is. like scalpeling somebody. I've, I've watched my own, when I had my shoulder no, operation you. done, this is, a, I'm, I'm coming to your point, kind of <laughs> bear with me. When I had my shoulder operation done, I had a camera put in and they gave me a regional block so I could watch it, what was happening on TV. And if it's happening to me, I'm all right with it. Um, but if I watch somebody like, you know, like there's plastic, especially plastic surgery stuff where they're sucking fat out of people's tummies, that properly, I have to turn it off. I'm, I'm a, a bit soft with stuff like that. I can't handle horror movies either. I had a problem with my, my 
my rear end one time. <laughs> yes. I had to watch. <laughs> Sit a, back. This is going to be. What happened, Dave? So I had to lie on my side, <laughs> and someone put a camera in me. On me. <laughs> to see what was going on in my intestines, and I was able to enjoy the view on the TV screen. I thought you were going to say something else, but as you <laughs> didn't, like you told me this story. He didn't give you much warning, did he? When when the camera was oh no, uh, he didn't, it was he, just he, a week of my life where three different people <laughs> inserted their finger. <laughs> but you told why me openly say about this. He didn't give you a countdown, did he? I he was like, remember. I thought I you told me you, you were lying there, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to it. <laughs> It's like someone's tickling your belly. It's really weird. (laughs) Anyway, good news is it was all fine. But we're all beautiful on the inside, even your intestine, I would imagine. I've seen me on the inside. It didn't look great. Right, so you contradict your own point. Back to (laughs) muscle-ups. Crikey, we've just lost half the audience. Are we keeping that in? Yeah, that was brilliant. Um, So, yeah. So, we all like to think we move in a perfect way (laughs) and posture is all perfect. Reality is that it's not. Right. So you've got to understand what your, your, your basic kind of like um, structure is. However, that doesn't give us an excuse to, to get away with poor posture because we can optimize it. Um, a lot of what you touch, touched on is, is something that people struggle with today, sitting at desks, driving, watching too much Netflix, playing too much Xbox, whatever. All of those things tend to bring us into these kind of slouch positions. Shoulders internally rotate, that moves the scapulas around the rib cage, shortens the muscles on the anterior, or the front of the chest and shoulders, and it lengthens the ones at the back. That's really important from a mechanics and force production side, which is gonna be critical to your muscle up. Um, but that's the first part of understanding sort of where is my sitting shoulder posture, it links in with thoracic spine. You're probably sat there now going, crikey, that sounds like a lot. Yeah. But the, the, to undo it, is massively possible um, and you can make definite improvements um, and one of the tests that we use just to give yourself a bit of a gauge of where you are is if you were to go and stand up against the wall feet flat against it you and then just bring your hands in front of you and then just lift your thumbs up to see if you can touch the wall with your arms straight whether your arms stay straight and how far you get to the wall whilst making sure that your ribcage doesn't pop up and lift up away from the pelvis mm. that's going to give you a rough indication of what the shoulder length is like or sorry the shoulder mobility is like and where your potential restrictions are and the other one is can you sit into a deep squat with your hands overhead we call it an overhead squat position unloaded with no bars but if you look at yourself side on the mirror and you're in that squat position you try and keep your hands up do you find that, that the arms are sort of falling forward and they're not in a nice straight line with the torso that's going to give you a bit of an idea about whether you've actually got some decent range of movement the second part of that then comes on to what you're going to do about improving the posture if you have got that but yeah. do you want to talk a bit about that I, I just first wanted to say those three men were all qualified doctors <laughs> going back a stage so okay it, it wasn't yeah um and <laughs> The big, because I got caught, I got caught up in this like years ago when I first started getting into the whole S and C world and learning a bit more about going from being a rugby player, not bothered about posture, just did I play well at the You often say that tighter is better because you feel like well, you're going to hit somebody in, in, a pack, yeah, in, in your yeah, mind. Yes, in my in, mind, as yeah. a C coach, I'm going. That's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. But um, but then coming out of that and going into something where it was actually oh, what your your shoulder, like like Candice has noticed, like your posture or shoulder flexibility, yeah. ability, where we call it is restricting your ability to do this new cool calisthenics thing you want to do, like flag or handstand, muscle, whatever it is. Um, but the important thing is that I got caught up in then trying to, what we said the, the, right, right at the beginning, going and like, what's full range, what's perfect, and trying to chase that perfect rather than going, if you've got a bit of tightness, a bit of restriction, if you make that a little bit better, mm. it's going to... F- uh, it might. It's, it doesn't have to be perfect for you to then be able to do. If you're str- you're struggling with the pull-ups and muscle up, it doesn't have to be perfect yep. for you to then be able to for it to be good enough and safe enough for you to be able to do a muscle. It's about tracking your progress and just and, and working on just improving mm. it <clears throat> gradually. Um, and like those two tests you said, it's going to give you some feedback straight away of has it improved or not. And you can yeah. make, we've shown before you can make changes within a session, let alone over the course of weeks mm. and months there was a time when you were doing quite a lot of work on your shoulder posture mm. you were struggling with a few niggles weren't you but like literally <clears throat> he was just couldn't leave himself alone every time i was sat with him mm. you would sit there and you got this like shepherd's crook thing and which i still like, like you like yeah. it but you were sat there the whole time like fiddling like trying to release well, it's muscles when you've, it's and like when you've when you've when you've I'm never so done yourself dave <laughs> when you've never done <laughs> if you've never done any like self myofascial release so self like massage yeah and someone then introduces it to you and you do a bit and you go Crikey, that feels better. And you find these mm. trigger points and then you get upset. Like, I've just got probably quite an obsessive like mm. mind. And then it's like, 
All right, I'm going to find all these triggers that you spend like all day endless. finding endless days of jiggle weights. But let me just yes. let me finish off on that one. So <clears throat> once we've kind of got an understanding of where posture is, we need to start to think about changing it. So there's a couple of things that I would suggest you have a look at. One of them is going to try and increase the range of movement that you've got in your pecs and your lats as a priority. And we've got some um, exercises in our beginner's guide, and we cover these quite a lot in the different eBooks of exercises or strategies which you can use to start to improve shoulder range of movement. So that could be using a tennis ball, putting it up against the wall or on the floor or on a squat rack and placing it over the front of the, the deltoid on the front of the shoulder and the pec having a hunt around until you find something which feels lumpy, gristly, painful. That's a trigger point where we've got quite a bit of tension accumulated in the muscle. Using the tennis ball as a source of pressure on that is just like going to get a sports massage or seeing a physio where they would just release it with their hands. We're just doing it for free and it's something we can do on a session, sessional basis. I'm gonna give Steve Bateman a shout out for this one who's a um, sports therapist course leader at University of Staffordshire who we're doing some work with. And he was saying as well, you really wanna kind of get towards the tendon mm -hmm. stage of that as well. So get towards the ends of the muscles and that's where often you can find some of that tightness. That's a great little, yeah, um, yeah, great yeah. little tip. Rather than necessarily in the <coughs> belly of the muscle, yeah. go after the connective tissue. Another one to think about is lats and posterior shoulder. So lying on the side or on your back and just hunting around sort of like anywhere where your lat runs, side of the rib cage, back of the shoulder, corner of the armpit. You don't want to go into the armpit, but on the back edge of it is pretty safe. And um, have a look for the videos on those because once you can see where we're trying to get to with yeah. a tennis ball it, or a lacrosse ball, it, it massively helps. Um, and then, so that would be one thing to start to decrease from the tightness. We can then use some stretches to start, or some mobility exercises to start to loosen um, or increase that range of movement. The, 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 the foam rolling or the self myofascial release using trigger point, uh, uh, bore to release trigger points, doesn't actually make the muscle longer, it just decreases the tension at which it's sitting at. Yeah. So we can then use a mobility exercise to start to increase that range of movement. And my last thing before that, Dave, I see is itching yeah. to jump in I've on this. Got, I've just got over one little thing, one little exercise. On mobility? Uh, no, 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 I'm more about activation. I was really going to Yeah, yeah, no, but, but it's going to, I think it'll be, I'm guessing. You go, 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 go. Okay. I think it's going to go on top. Um, so yeah, if once we loosen off that anterior shoulder, the things that are internally rotating the shoulders, our job is to strengthen the muscles which have got long and to hold that muscle or hold that, that joint in place. So that's going to be our, our rhomboids, our mid -low trapezius, our rotator cuff, all the things which are starting to actually hold the, the shoulder into a more neutral position. So it's just a posture is a balancing act. You've got to get the right length tension relationship, so the right muscle length on the front, and then we've got to do something on the back to strengthen to hold it there. If we miss that activation phase, the body's just going to go back to what it knows because mm. it hasn't got anything to actually, to structurally keep it in a better position. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was, and I thought, well, and some of like exercise like the YTWs yeah. is something that would be good for activation wise, like that. Building maybe on top of a YTW, making it a bit more specific to the actual pull up position. Um, I was going to suggest, um, and Tim will be able to hit us with the stat for it because I don't know if it's off of my head, uh, about retraction at the top of a pull-up. That if if uh, if you've done some nice work releasing off and then like YTWs to get a bit of activation, but then actually going into your pull-up and maybe use a band to assist you so you can actually comfortably hold the top, really work on making sure you open, like lift your chest and actually get some of that retraction mm. happening and get those shoulders back, peel them back, but get a bit of... Um, an isometric strength, like so, hold a little bit at the top. Really feel the shoulder raise squeezing mm. together behind you, like you're holding a pound coin between them, and then slowly lower down. You could use the strongest band you ever want, but just to get you going through the range, but actually starting to be aware of what's your shoulder position like at the top of that movement, because yeah. it's often at the top where we really round forward. Get yourself used to pulling them back once you've loosened off the front and you've activated a little bit yeah. around the back. Yes. Um, just to finish off that sort of yeah. little bit of correct, it's a bit of a corrective exercise work for. <coughs> the thing with the muscle, which is a bit unique in calisthenics, is that we're taking the shoulder through full range of movement. So the hand over the head, we're in full shoulder flexion. We're going to finish in a dip. It's not quite full shoulder extension, but relatively, we've come quite a yeah. long range of movement. So because of the nature of the, the shoulder joint, the glenohumeral joint, we, it's, we need that range of movement because we want it to move smoothly. We need the, 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 the humerus, the bone in the upper arm, to just articulate nicely around the shoulder so it actually can create good quality movement. You, some of you will be sat there going, stop talking about posture, boys, like, boring. <laughs> um, I don't want to stretch. We put this movement preparation phase in the beginning of our framework because it is so important. Yeah. Because if you're trying to do a muscle up and you haven't got access to the range of movement that you need, either two things are going to happen. Um, one, you're going to achieve it, the muscle up, but it's going yeah. to look grotty. And sooner or later, that 
movement pattern or breakdown, you'll get injured. Yeah. Pretty confident with that. Yeah. Or two, you're not going to be able to achieve the position at yeah. all because you can't move through the range of movement that's required. And, and that happens a lot on the rings, which we'll talk about yeah. particularly. Yeah. Um, so if you, when you're pulling through, if we can get the shoulder into a good postural position, one, it's safer, it's going to produce more force yeah. because it's more stable. Um, and we're also going to decrease our risk of injury and put more force down. Yeah. If we can do those things, then if you need more reason to focus on your posture, if you're trying to work towards a muscle up, yeah. I've got more. Yeah, yeah. well, the, and, and I think the nice thing about, and I've banged on about this recently, I feel like, but those listening might not have heard it, that um, people, like you say, people sometimes being a bit bored of, I remember, I remember when I was playing rugby, like the physio, like, like I couldn't touch my toes, my hamstrings were that tight, and I pulled my hamstrings between the both and probably 10 times, mm. and it's like, but I didn't make that connection in my head. You're like, well, probably a bit tight. Like, do some stretching, do some flexibility, do some mobility. Work. More hamstring curls. Like, boring. <laughs> like, we didn't want to do it. But yeah. then, but if, so if if you're in that position, if you switch your mind around going like, it's going to help me unlock or it's going to help me be able to do this cool thing I want to do, whether you think it's cool. Mm. But you know what I mean? Like, you're trying to do a muscle up and it's that that's restricting you. Then it gives you that motivation yeah. to, to stay actually consistent with Because that's the thing with mobility work. And improving range you need to be consistent with mm. it it's not about doing it yeah. once um so it really does help you stay focused and motivated to actually adhere to doing some consistently yeah. um it brings us on nicely to um the next um question which was um and uh, we've got actually quite a few of them so i'm going to just put them all together around um, this transition phase in the muscle up and it, it's relevant for both bar and rings it's the bit of the um, whether it's on a bar or on this, it's the bit of the muscle up that people find the hardest. So yeah. we've got the first phase of a muscle up, the pull. Second phase, the transition from the end of a pull up to the start of a, of a deep dip. Um, and that's the bit that people find the hardest. And um, some people uh, ask it, a variety of questions asking about why is it that part so difficult? And I wanted to sort of kick off that with the whole with the whole mobility that range yeah. because you just it just it goes, it goes on nicely really well. from what yeah, you yeah. just said at getting into that deep dip position um, where we have got internal rotation of the shoulder and into extension where people are typically tight mm. and that's restricting them getting into that shape i actually said before like when you're finishing your dip position you're actually not in full extension but you're right through that transition you've got when to hit full extension yeah. full range in, in the shoulder and then you've got to press back out well, so I you're like going to... from full flexion full extension yeah and I, well i'd like to think i've um i've started to i don't know if i am pictorial or visual learner but i'm i'm starting to think of the muscle up these three phases like like three bars so i've got a, a pull up at the bottom, which is like a bar, a little bar on top of which is the transition, and then another bar, which is the dip. And what I want to try and do is take my pull up as high as I can, yep. and bring my dip as low as I can to squeeze the distance for my transition as small as possible to make that most difficult bit the easiest yep. bit. So the higher my pull up, the deeper my dip, um, the easier the transition part becomes. Yeah. And there's there's that, if you are tight in through your shoulders, you won't be able to get high in your pull-up and you won't be able to get deep in your mm. dip. But it's also strength. If you're not strong enough getting high, not strong enough getting deep into a dip, yeah. those two things need to go together. But it is definitely... I just my theory around it is make the most difficult bit as easy as possible. Yeah, I mean the irony of that is that if you if you can stack if you can increase the pulling power so you get higher above the bar, you don't need to dip as low. Exactly. But that actually becomes quite important if you want to put multiple reps of muscle up together. Having that deep dip position in the locker is great yeah. because you're gonna as you get tired you're gonna progressively pull um, less high. Yeah, not as high. Not, not as high above yeah. the bar, um, and therefore you're gonna want to access that deep dip position, and that's relevant in both the bar and the ring yeah. variation. And that's the point where, mo where pe people don't get, if people pick up niggles and issues around their shoulder doing muscle ups, it's not, it's not the top of their pull. It's yeah. as they go into that dip, as they go forward, yeah. if they haven't got room, the head of the humor shoots forward yeah. in that, and that's when we start to get, to get some issues. So Yeah, if you go back to what we were talking about before, like if you sat because we've been a lot of desk work and computer work, we've got this rounded shoulder position. If we then go pull from a pull up position, we pull high, we need to transition, which means flicking the elbow behind the body into extension. That's going to roll the humeral head forwards. If you're super tight in the front of the shoulder and you haven't got much strength to stabilize the shoulder in the back, which is what we're talking about, that humeral head just allowed to move around where it wants. It just rams itself into the front of the socket. So now it's actually not in a great position at all. There's compensations around the shoulder. It's not stable because the, the musculature at the back isn't supporting the scapula well either. And now we're in a really nasty position. This is when we, we see 
people learn to muscle up the centers videos, particularly on the bar, yeah. and we see what is kind of seems to be accepted term as the chicken wing. Yeah. Um, Love because <laughs> what's happening in a bar muscle up is when you pull high, we then, to get into the transition, we need to effectively throw our head and your shoulders over the bar so we can shift our weight distribution on top of the bar. Yeah. There's something I really like about this in, in my mind, it encourages people to train with a proper progression rather than just going through a chicken wing kind of muscle, yeah. which is one arm above and one arm below. Yeah. Um, and then they kind of like, they wrestle with it and all of a sudden the other arm comes, comes up on top. What I, I would, I'm sort of a, as a, a my guess, um, educated guess would be for most people, the chicken wing is their non-dominant arm, which is the arm left below the yeah. bar. So if you pull up, my, I'm right-handed, my right arm goes over, it creates the right position. The bottom arm, my left arm, the one stuck below the bar is the one which then gets stuck. The reason for that is because as a child or as a grown up, you'd have done a lot of work throwing, which is internal rotation of the shoulder. So we cock the arm and then we throw. If I try and throw my right arm, I can throw way further than if I grab the ball with my left arm. So actually I don't have the motor skill or the speed in that internal rotation to be able to actually throw a ball. So on a muscle up when I pull high, it's logical that just neurally I'm not connected to the point where I can actually create enough speed in that split second that I'm above the bar to get that left arm above it yeah. and go over. So if you're gonna just try without a, um, without a band, for example, is, it, is a useful progression to try and nail that muscle up and you're finding that you're getting one arm up and one down, you've got a really easy job to do is leave the ego behind get a resistance band on yeah. and train with, an, with enough support from the band or assistance so that actually means you can fire both arms at the same time. Yeah. The body loves symmetry. Where as soon as we've got asymmetry in a position, in a shoulder, in a posture, in a movement um, that is not controlled, like a muscle up, it's happening at speed when with force, um, you're asking for issues. Yeah. The body is like, this asymmetry does not go well. Yeah. So for your own shoulder health, because I, I remember I learned badly, didn't we? Remember, I was, and yeah. I was like, come out of it, and the, the, the <laughs> tension in that position, yeah. bicep is just going nuts, and you come out of you like, well, I did a muscle up. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 we call it a chicken wing because it literally feels like you're gonna snap it off, like you'll pull a chicken wing, chicken wing off a leg. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know where my end yeah, point of that no. is, but, but train with progression and, and, and understand that your job is to get above the bar quickly, but you've got to move with quality, otherwise it's not yeah. beautiful strength. A muscle up with one arm below and one yeah. above is not beautiful. And that, it's, it's almost seamless uh, because the final question was around, um, we put a YouTube video out that the reason why you can't muscle up and it was all about, um, particularly for the bar, about speed. Um, and that's what the, the final question is from John who says, um, uh, he's asking about speed training and actually that opened up his eyes to go, well, I don't actually. I no one trains speed. Yeah, and pull how, how? Why is it important? How do they, how do they actually? How does he actually go about doing it effectively? It's like like you said what's fast enough? It's like you said before, a lot of people go, oh, I can, I can do, I can do fifteen pull ups, but I can't do muscle up. Yeah. And, but the pull up is slow. And you're like, okay, you're strong enough, yeah. but you haven't created enough velocity to get high enough above the bar to give yourself the biomechanical advantage to be able to actually shift body position. I've got a great example. I had. Oh, I'm gonna forget his name. Came to a class. Um, in Nottingham on two weeks ago, and he was really close to the bar muscle up. Does a lot of climbing, mm -hmm. he's a climber, so he's like good at pull ups. Yep. And I asked him what he did in his training. He was like, he does 15 kilo pull ups, but really, really slow. Really, oh, he's doing really controlled. He says, really controlled. <laughs> five seconds up, five seconds out. So, yeah, flipping out. That's Massive lats. But like, I was like, <laughs> that's flipping out. Five seconds up, five seconds down with 15 yeah, kilo I was, I was like, that should have been good. Because you want to do a pull up, you need to start doing a fast. Mm, um, a muscle, muscle up. up. You, still, you want to start doing a fast. It was like, what, what, what do you mean? Like this idea of, and I had a question. There was a question when I did an Instagram Live this week, where it was like, oh, should I train fast? Mm. Then I was like, well, it depends what you want. Like if you want to do a fast movement, you need to train fast. Yeah. But if you want to be super slow and control for a movement, you need to train slow. If you mm. want to hold a static position like a lever or a human flag, you need to practice staying still. Yeah. yeah. So um, he did. I said to him. Um, do some fast pull, like do some weighted ones, but try and move it fast. Yep. And then do Impulse. some fast pulls with um, with a band, and then and I, I thought he might do it the following week, but I don't want pressure on it. So mm. do that for two weeks. I bet you'll get your first muscle up. And then he came back a week later because I did it. Yeah. In one week, like so, it was just wasn't training the stimulus that he needed. Is it? What he wasn't, what he was lacking, he was lacking speed. Train speed. There's a really interesting bit about that is if, if you've never really trained that and then you start moving quickly, you expose yourself to a neural stimulus like that, yeah, like yeah. speed or exactly. skill, 
the body just goes, oh, sweet. Like, I would, that, would adapt oh, straight away. I thought you wanted me to move slow. Yeah. If you're a 100 meter sprinter or, or, or something where you've done a lot of speed training, trying to eke out another tenth is flipping yeah. hard. But if you've never trained speed, you're going to make massive improvements in a very short period of time. It's just neurally teaching the brain to, to create force faster. Yeah. Um, so there's some quick wins there, and um, yes. I think it's, uh, yeah, definitely. It's we that see signaling, isn't it? Yeah. And you can actually, a bit like the patterning work, like when we talk about hand balancing, you can make a change really quickly because you're learning, mm. whereas building genuine strength because of what's actually going on at a cellular level takes time. Well, from a strength and condition perspective, we're working with athletes, if we were like working on what we call like a linear periodization, but we're, we're trying to peak towards a, a, a major event, mm. the job would be create some stabilization strength, get the posture sorted like we've talked yeah. about, add some basic capacity within that, and then we have a phase called specific strength before we move into competition prep. Yeah. Specific strength would be our strength, like typically maximum strength type work. So that would fall into like doing pull-ups with heavy weighted. Yeah. So you're trying to increase height, put down a lot of force. Yeah. And then we get competition ready by just training speed. Yeah. Because power is gonna be the one thing which in a lot of sports differentiates people in between um, the opposition. So you've gone through those phases, and if you've got those things in place, when you come to train speed, you're just putting icing on the cake. You've yeah. got all the things that you need. You've just got to train those now to move quickly. Um, so it, it makes sense that it's a real simple I, I, progression. I, I think you're going to give like a absolute beauty on here because I didn't know you were going to say that. But let's then go give that periodized model. Yeah. Full like, muscle up. Yeah. Someone starting. So that like. Um, Activation yeah. work, that the, the stabilization work, the theory, the strength, and then the final like because actually that works beautiful for a muscle up. Yeah. And go and how much? So how many weeks would might we typically stay in each one? And what would what why, what might that look like really loosely? Okay, so Dave's added on there really loosely because my next point was people have written whole books about <laughs> periodization. So in a nutshell, it, yeah, yeah, it's like is it good? Is it like for four weeks or is it one week? Or is yeah, it yeah. Like so between let's, one and ten. <clears> to reinforce what we've talked about today, um, posture work, movement preparation, mobility work release work, improving your shoulders capacity to, to move through range of movement, that's consistent. Oh. That happens from day one to muscle up graduation. Um, the first stage of that would be some stabilization work, so it's just starting to get the shoulder moving well, activated, and I'll throw some basic strength in there. What you like at body weight rows, start getting some decent pull up strength within you, so can you start to build those numbers up a little bit? Let's simplify it and just go, that's a general preparation phase. Yeah. Get your pull ups nailed, get some uh, some horizontal rows nailed down because they're going to be good for your shoulder yeah. posture rather than just pulling vertically all the time. Don't worry too much about the specific attributes of a muscle up. You need yeah. to be able to pull up and you need to be able to dip and I'll just do some something which is going to keep the posture looking yeah. tidy. Eight to 12 reps, three to four sets. And that might be for, how about for four, four weeks. weeks. Yeah. Depending on where you're yeah, starting, sure. yeah. and that's like all well, relative. So it could be four weeks. You might spend, if you can't do a single pull up or a dip, you're yeah, going to yeah. spend three months in that preparation phase and that's where it becomes individualized but you're gonna have a block off time yeah. i then start moving towards going right i need to move at speed so i've never trained heavy pull-ups before i can do 10 pull-ups so i'm going to put some uh, a weighted vest on i'm going to put a weight belt on and i'm going to start doing work which is i'm going to feel like i'm moving slow because i've got a heavy weight on but i'm yeah. trying to move fast yeah. that cue there is really important because we're training impulse the intention to move quickly um so you start putting a little bit of that work in. Um, I would have to do the same with my dips. I would start in at that phase to start to program a little of the transition. So it might be that I'm starting to practice like a negative on the transition or an eccentric just to start yeah. to learn that movement pattern. Um, I would throw in a little bit of um, maybe some banded work as well in the movement yeah, pattern, just again to start to teach that assistance. But your main <coughs> focus would be on that building that more maximal strength. Yeah. So three to five reps. Yeah like three to six sets, depending yeah. on what you want to work on. And for how long would that block again? It depends, but I'd probably put six weeks together. Yeah. You'd be doing pretty well, depending on where you're starting from. If you've already got some of these attributes, you can shrink these down yeah. and you can you can be selective of your stages. And then the last bit is really just- The magic start, bit. The magic bit is the bit where you're gonna go, this is now movement specific. So our competition variation would be very much in sport would be, very specific to what we're trying to do. So we've got some wheelchair races that we're prepping for competition at the moment. It very much looks as much as possible like wheelchair racing. Yeah. So we want our training now to look like muscle ups. So the job then is just to take that, that, that strength that you've developed and now train the body to get fast. So in your pull ups, you want to start pulling as high above the bar as you can. So if you can get the bar to your rib cage, 
even better hips. Yeah. You want to practice that. Don't worry about the transition because when you start a muscle up, when you start pulling high, if you're thinking about completing the muscle up, you're already worried about the transition. The yeah, same you happens don't in a clean. The pull, do you? No, the same happens in a clean or a snatch. You're already starting thinking about it. That's why we break those movements down as well. Um, so get high above the bar. Start just getting comfortable. Once you can dip, that's not the hard bit. Dip is yeah. fairly easy. Um, and then we have a nice little bit where you can start to get some, uh, we call it post-activation potentiation work, but you go heavy pull-up. So take that sort of like five, four rep max, three rep max, heavy pull-up with some extra weight on. Do a set of those, give yourself a minute, get a band on, which is gonna catapult you upwards. But like Jack said, if you wanna be fast, you've gotta train fast. Mm -hmm. But we're then, what we're then going to do is use the band to, to complete, again, that high pull position. You don't need to worry about the transition. And the, and the band needs to be thick. It yeah. needs to be leave the ego. It's not like a band that means I can actually, it feels okay. It's a band that makes you feel like you're moving so fast yeah. that it's too easy. Yeah, it's yeah. that type of speed. What we're getting with that combination is the brain's getting a stimulus of heavy weight, it's getting used to producing high amounts of force, and then all of Fire a sudden, everything, yeah, like, get, yeah everything get everything shooting. And then, then what we do is we change the environment and go put that same kind of force down, but now in a position where I can move explosively. It'd be the same as going heavy back squat, vertical jump. Yeah. Same kind of complex. Sort of complex yeah. um, and I Oof. think, well, there's a lot in there. Oh, write that down. down in the cell, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's there, it's free. Those that are making names, you've got yourself a little periodized plan. If you don't want to write that down, that is all and more in the muscle up book, but wow. we're talking about a power movement. So yeah. you've got, we're looking for this combination between force and velocity. Yeah. And we need to be somewhere in between if we're gonna be able to do both. There's a, we, that, is that all right? That's a yeah, nutshell. Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. And it might be that like, if, you, if that equation for power is force times velocity and you go, you know what, Tim, I am actually the fastest guy in the world and genuinely like you are the fastest puller upper in the world. Yeah. Well, then you might need to train the strength part more. But that's very, very likely, it's likely that 99% of people it's going to or even more it's they're missing the velocity part yeah. of that equation so train the thing you're weaker yeah three or four range of movement my last point before we go because we're yeah. getting we're getting signals to wrap it up is you've got to go from dead hang yes don't pull from short range you've got to open out into that setup position you've got to allow yourself to go into full extension overhead mm -hmm. and be able to create force from the bottom position so when you finish your pull-ups don't finish in the end you need to go all the way down dead hang active hang and then restart the movement because that's what's going to happen when you start to rep out multiple reps yeah and i would say <laughs> whether whether you're training pull-ups muscle ups flipping and even if you don't do calisthenics you do something else go through full range of motion yeah. always it's better forever amen <laughs> I feel like I feel like it like and the lane says, from that go today. through full range. Yeah, so we did, and it was good. <laughs> <And> it was good. <laughs> it was very good. Um, right. Well, yeah. there is. Yeah. I hope, I hope you've enjoyed that as a whistle stop tour of some muscles and some common problems that we're seeing. Yeah. Um, go back and have a look at what you're doing. Film yourself doing them. Work out where your sticking points are. Yeah. Take your time. Leave your ego at the door. Train effectively and progressively. If you've got, if that hasn't answered your muscle up problems or your muscle up questions then send them into us comment below with those um also it will be something we've never heard because i think we've covered everything yeah the, when we wrote the muscle up book um we put a lot into it and it, it, if you like science give it a read yeah. there it is in two sections but um dave dave said if it's if it's if you've got a question about muscle ups and it's not covered in the muscle up book then it's not a question about muscle ups because <laughs> yes. we literally put everything we know that's in there and it yeah. covers both the ring and the bar um yeah 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 so check yeah. it out cool so i think we've yeah. been we've come in on journey we've talked We've reflected, we've talked yeah, about we, you being we, violated. We went, yeah, we went, we went deep, didn't we? <laughs> I don't know where that came yeah. from, but it was amazing. I intentionally said that, so now Harvey has to keep it in the edit. <laughs> Otherwise people go, date violate, what's that about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's gonna be probably its whole own section. Right, yeah. That could be next week's Q&A. <laughs> Send questions in yeah, about if that, actually. Any health and, <laughs> health and <laughs> violation <laughs> questions. Has anyone else experienced that? Who felt my pain? I think there'll be plenty of people out there where they would admit it on camera to you. It's the thing you, they'd make know. you drink beforehand to sort of clear the, clear the airways. That's Until next time. That's the space.